Kenyatta in Los Angeles. Hey, Kenyatta. We've come to loggerheads Good before, to and we're going to right now. But that's not. But I'm not, I'm going to be respectful to you. You mentioned something a moment uh, about a half hour ago. You talked about Michelle and Barack Obama and and being an angry black person or black man. What, however you phrased it, I'm, I'm yeah. paraphrasing. Um, and I'm and I think you know I'm the poster child for for the angry black man. In fact, I know I, I read your newsletter that, on Substack. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, right. Listen, I I don't. But but here's the Tom. I just want to say this to you. And, and then I want to talk about where this be, becomes positive, if you'll just give me a minute. Yeah, um, sure. I, 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 don't, um, I don't think that black people in this country have been angry enough. I think mm. that's me personally. That's my subjective opinion. Yeah, I get it. I think we've not been angry enough. I think that anger, when it, and then when you say anger and black, it becomes um, this toxic mix. But... We look at uh, after uh, September 11th, 2001. How angry was the United States? How many hundreds of thousands of people were killed all over the world yeah. uh, on the fight against yeah. a war on terror? So, uh, uh, you, you know, anger it, it keeps uh, in some ways it keeps human beings alive. But that's not really my point. What I wanted to say, as it as it relates to the Democrat Democratic National Convention, is this: you had mentioned. Uh, uh, also an invisible racism. See, it's not invisible if you can recognize it as being invisible. See, recognizing it's invisible makes it visible. Okay? What I would like to hear from Ms. Harris is this, and I'm hoping it happens. I vote my interests like everyone else in this country does. I want to, to hear about police and criminal justice reform since she was a former prosecutor, and I actually met her the one time I did, I was in the room with her, shook hands, said hello, and, and 2001 when she was a DA in San Francisco. Um, but, mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I wasn't impressed, but that's me. Okay, but I want to hear about infant mortality in which blacks rank number one. I want to hear about maternal mortality and all the people talking about misogynism, which we're going to hear that word over and over again, misogyny. I want to hear about that, what, 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 maternal mortality, black people rank number one. Incarceration levels, black people rank number one. And if you're an incarcerated individual, then you are legally a slave per the 13th Amendment, and you and I have talked about that before. Lung cancer, heart disease, life expectancy. I want to hear about those things. And I hope, like hell, damn a speech, I hope that she addresses these things for us. Yeah. Because these things are peculiar to us. We cannot, we can no longer as a country say that we're advancing and not understand that this group of people continually, my entire six decades, six decades of life, this has continued to be a constant. Huh? This needs to be addressed. If we're going to celebrate her being I a person of color, then we need to address these issues peculiar to those people. Are, do you disagree with me? Yes and no. I, I absolutely okay. agree with you that these are an, an absolute crisis, and not just for black people, but for all of America, because when any of us are hurting, all of us are hurting. It damages our entire society, and it has for 500 years, as you well know and you often write about. I also know that the reason why, or I believe, that the reason why uh, Barack and Michelle Obama did the whole, you know, when they go low, we go high thing was because they mm -hmm. were trying really hard not to center race because they know that, you know, something like 75 percent of all voters in America are white people. And probably half of those white people are pretty racist. And the other half who aren't pretty racist can be triggered into being racist. And so mm -hmm. while I believe, I really, truly believe that, that President Harris is policies will do everything you just talked about. I would be surprised if she brings it up in her speech Friday or Thursday night because it might be seen as as you know fractionating as as do, as as breaking Americans out into individual groups and then advocating for one of those groups when in fact she wants to go for the biggest biggest group possible which is not just white people but everybody and so my guess is that her speech is not going to dwell on the individual crises that 
that, you know, you could say the same thing about DACA or immigration for Hispanics. You could say the same thing about, you know, anti-Asian hate. Uh, you could say the same thing about the queer community. I mean, there's all these different groups that have suffered historically horrible oppression in the United States. Black people, obviously, at the top of that list. Well, Native Americans, arguably, at the top, top of that list. I mean, they, they experienced the world's largest genocide in history. But, but I, I, my guess is that what she's going to be doing is trying to do big themes. But once she becomes president, you can count on it. You can count on it. I mean, it's like, you know, you're already seeing a lot of that coming out of the Biden administration. Am I making any sense here, Kenyatta? Oh, you, you absolutely, you always do. No, what, what, what the hell? What, you, 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 I, no one can ever argue with the way you present arguments. You should have been a lawyer. But, but all, all I'm getting at <laughs> is that, uh, no, seriously, Tom, I, um, yeah, I'm, really, I I'm really concerned about, I'm really concerned about what's happening in the United States. And um, yeah, and and if uh, all of the things that you mentioned, um, the fact is, is that they have to be addressed individually, though, because this is yep. a group of people. No, you're right. That at the same, at the right. same time she's representing and being celebrated for, this is a group of people that get the worst of everything. Every statistic yep. shows it, Tom. And I'm, yep. I just don't yep. know. I, I, agree. I guess what I'm asking you, I don't know how that gets navigated politically. I guess that's. I, I guess that's that's well, the bottom I think, line. I think you do it by policy. I mean, you know, it's uh, you know, Lyndon Johnson didn't run on the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act, but he sure as hell did it. Um, you know, and I know you have some problems with LBJ, but the, the point is, do. You, you know, at the end of the day, if you really want to solve these problems, you have to do it at the level of policy. And in order to do policy, you have to get elected. And in order to get elected, you've got to, you know, you've got to bring in as many people as possible. And that means don't alienate groups that, you know, like white racists, for example, who might just overlook her race if she doesn't really get into it. I, I you know, I, I, not the fulminating racists. She's never going to get them. But the people who don't even mm -hmm. realize that they're racist, they just marinated yeah. in it their whole entire lives. Yeah. You know what yep. I'm talking about. Yep. You know exactly yep. what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, I do. Yes, and, I do. And, and I'm so glad yeah. you said that. Look, I know you got a lot of people in your queue. Tom, you know what? What you just said was so inspiring to me. I'm going to sit back and revisit a few things as a result of this conversation. Thank you. Okay, well, it's always good talking to you, Kenyatta, and keep on writing. I love your Substack newsletter. Yeah, people can find it at Substack.com. Just plug in Kenyatta. Kenyatta, thanks so much. Yes, sir. Good talking to you. We'll be right back. It's 45 minutes past the hour here, uh, broadcasting live from the Democratic National Convention. I'll be right back with you.